Hey everybody, good morning, good morning. Hope you're having an awesome day. Coffee is going, we got the second cup going. <laughs> uh, if you could just do me a favor, let's confirm that the audio visual is good. We'll kick it off. We have a lot to cover today. Uh, yesterday, new all-time highs again. We actually talked about it was the 52nd time this year that the market made new all-time highs, which is just uh, the SPY, the SPY, the S&P 500, uh, just absolutely incredible. I just want to say hello to a few people. Uh, hey, John, how's it going, pal? Love to see you here today. Uh, Pam Hicks, good morning, good morning. Probably one of the hardest workers that we have in our community. Hey, Weldon, how's it going? We're actually going to do a couple of things today. We're actually going to uh, we're going to we're going to dive into a new book. So every day, I'm going to try my best to get into one of those books. We're going to talk about this one today. Uh, we're also going to review an email that I sent to our private community this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're also going to review a question from our private coaching call every Monday night by a mile. Nothing's even close. Uh, Monday night, we have our private coaching call um, for our community. And I think by a mile, and I think most people agree that it is the most valuable part of our private community. Obviously, these, these are the, the public videos behind the scenes where we do the stock, you know, the entries, the exits, the trade management. We also have coaching calls. We have several coaching calls a week and trade reviews and that kind of stuff. But the Monday night call specifically by a mile is the most valuable thing that we do. Now, just to give you an idea of the depth of kind of what's like behind the curtain, uh, each call, generally speaking, and last night was the last week of August, the end of summer. So you figure like everybody's kind of laid back and whatnot. Um that call alone was an hour and 15 minutes, but generally speaking, the calls are 90 minutes at least. So we stay on there to ask every single possible question and you get an answer to everything. But the point that I want to get across is I'm going to show you a question from one of our members last night named Michelle, uh, who brought up so many good things in just like two or three sentences that I want to share it with you today and give you, uh, give you some places to think. So that if you're like me, if you're like most people that really are obsessed with getting better, you write everything down, you journal it, uh, you know, every single day you have deeper thoughts and, and you, you just like the, the mantra is I want to be better tomorrow. I want to be better tomorrow. It's, it's never about making mistakes. It's about did I learn from it? How do I do better? Did I learn? How do I do better? And Michelle brought up a really, really good question. So we're going to highlight her question. We're going to review the question and then we're going to discuss it. Um, I also want to share a video from this morning. Uh, excuse me, not a video, a um, an email. Uh, but stick around for just one second. This is a required part of our day. Okay, so everything that we do here is for educational purposes. It's my mission in life right now to um, provide as much value as I possibly can uh, and help you make better decisions, which is actually what we're going to get to um, with uh, with Michelle's question. So if you find this stuff valuable, definitely click down and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, hit the thumbs up button. And absolutely, and I can't stress this enough, I want to help. Leave a comment. <laughs> Anything that you um, have a question about is stuff that we talk about, leave a comment below. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to get back to you as soon as I can. It looks like my collars are a little messed up. <laughs> um, all right. Second cup of coffee kicking in. Uh, let me see. I just want to answer this question. Uh, would you recommend to buy at closing for the next day trade for day trade purposes? Uh, Ephraim, we actually do have a strategy for that in our community, but it has to meet really strict criteria. Um, I don't know who anybody on, on this um, call right now was trading way back in the day. Uh, there was a firm called Schoenfeld Securities all the way back in probably... I want to say the 90s up until maybe the mid 2000s, uh, by far one of the top trading firms in New York City at that time. Uh, so the context of the question is buying on the close into the next day. A very big part of their strategy actually was looking for strong stocks that had bullish order flow, buying those stocks on the close and then exiting the next morning. So they literally would be trading the last half hour of the day and the first half hour of the day. And that was where a majority of their traders were trained. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into making those decisions of which stocks. Uh, there needs to be certain conditions. There needs to be sector rotation. There needs to be industry group support. There needs to be good volume. Uh, then you get into the last part of how close to the high of the day does that matter in order to buy? 
Um, so yeah, it's absolutely strategy. We do have a strategy that involves moving averages and a couple of other things. Uh, it's one. It's actually probably one of our most common setups. And the setup actually unfolded yesterday um, in uh, a few stocks, Pfizer and Walmart, actually. Uh, if we could pull those up, Pfizer and Walmart, the trades actually unfolded and Walmart actually uh, happening again here today. So 100%, but you really need to think about when you are taking that risk. Are you taking it after a few days of bullish momentum and it pauses? You buying after a pause on the way down? How much on the daily and weekly and the monthly time frame have to be on your side? So there's a bunch of different things uh, that go into that. So Ephraim, I want to be clear. I don't recommend anything. That's why we always have that disclaimer at the front. However, there are 100% strategies that walk you through um, when to buy on the close, which is also different risk because you have two different things in there. Um, buying on the close for the next day is not day trading. And you actually typed in there for day trade purposes. If you're going to day trade, there's no reason in the world to buy on the close and hold overnight because now that becomes an overnight trade or a swing trade. So it's no longer a, uh, it's no longer a day trade. That's a swing trade now. So make sure, and by the way, that's actually a big thing. Make sure that you have your time frames and your strategy uh, one hundred percent in line because an overnight is not a day trade. That's that's actually the opposite of a day trade. So it's a really good question, Ephraim. Just make sure that you're um, understanding the whole context. Uh, so actually, something else we want to get into today. Um, I want to just share this email uh, because we get a lot of questions. This is this is the email that goes out to our members every day. Uh, there's a lot more in here, obviously trade setups and whatnot. Uh, but this is the point that I want to highlight over here is we get a lot of questions about is right now a good time to be a trader? And I just can't express strongly enough when you are looking at charts of the market that are um, nothing you've ever seen before. And let's just put this in context and we'll go back 20 years and way, way, way back to the end of the dot-com boom, which was basically here. So everybody knows the dot-com boom. This was the dot-com boom, okay? Everybody knows it was vicious. Hey, hey, Tom, how's it going? Everybody knows it was vicious. Everybody knows it was amazing. This period of time here was the dot-com boom. There was ups, there was downs, it was all over the place, and I'll get into that in a second. This is where we are now. Just let that sink in for a second. If you even have uh, for a second on your mind right now, that, wow, this might be a really difficult time to be learning how to be a trader. Look at that chart where everybody knows that the dot-com boom was just amazing. Fortunes were made, and we're going to talk about those fortunes in a second, versus the period of time that we're in right now, which is completely blowing away the persistency of what happened during the dot-com boom. So if you, if you take anything out of today's live stream and you decide you're thinking about buying stocks and whatnot, just remember this. The rallies in the current market are about as persistent and consistent as possible. The biggest difference, though, between now and then, which is actually a really big positive, okay, which is a really big positive, is that the declines in the market that we have right now are super quick, super shallow, and get met with buying again very quickly. And the persistency of the moves to the upside are um, – incredible. So if we go back to the email, the part that I want to get across here is, again, thinking about um, the current market conditions and getting into this right now is if you can imagine and think about the moves to the upside, the moves to the downside, and this here, if you could think about the meme stocks, if you could think about AMC, and let, you know, if we go over to those charts in a second, uh, and think about the AMC, let's, let's actually go to GME because it's probably a little bit of a better, if you can think about this and this and this and, and specifically this period here, that's what it was like to trade during the dot-com boom every single day. So if, if you have, you know, like you need some context because I, I want to like snap you out of like, wow, this is hard, this might be a harder time to trade. This is an amazing time to trade. The only thing that we're missing, and this was a question last, again, last night in our coaching call that, Brian Rosenberg brought up, which was a really, really good question, was about earning more on your winning trades. That's the difference because we, we spend a lot of time in our community right now um, discussing the 
Losses don't matter as long as you keep losses reasonable, what you expected them to be, and then you learn how to make more on the winning trades. The challenge that we've had lately, and, the, and, and this is really the big difference between the dot-com boom and now, is volatility. The volatility level back then was off the charts. The volatility level right now is actually down, and we'll actually take a look at that right now just to give some context. This is where the volatility is now. This is where the volatility was earlier in the year. And just to go back, this is where the volatility was at the height of the pandemic when the market sold off. We're all the way down here. So if you could imagine stocks flying over here, we're all the way down here. This was up in the 90s. I think it was 80, 85. Right now we're down at 16 and change. So what does that mean? Like what does that actually mean for, for trading? It means that you need to adjust your position sizing because of wider stop losses. That's the big part. So how does that translate into today? How does that translate into what that means for you right now as a trader in this current market? And again, I, I am emphatic that I want you to learn this because this is a really big deal. I saw when I first started trading, which again was April 2000, April 17th of 2000, there were an office full of people. I was trading on Long Island. It was right near the Roosevelt Field Mall on uh, Old Country Road over there. Um, there were fortunes being made in a very short period of time. However, and this is the part that I want to highlight, this part right here is this. Traders back then believed they were genius traders. They weren't. It was a ripping bull tide that lifted all boats. So that's the first part. The second part is this. It's something that is driving people crazy right now, especially on the active trading side. The biggest upside is the speed of decisions. If you can hone your skills and make confident, well thought out decisions right now, you're in great shape. So you might feel like you're getting your head beat around a little bit. However, a good example is sector rotation, okay? Typically a sector industry group is in play for months. You can ride that wave for easy wins and catch the next wave. This is the truth. Right now, rotation is happening by the hour. We are literally watching it in our private community by the hour, but here's the big thing. If you're good in this current chaos, you have developed a lifelong skill. I can't stress this enough. Once you understand order flow, once you understand how to read the tape, and remember, everybody thinks that reading the tape is the thing that goes across the bottom on CNBC. That's not tape reading. Those are just quotes. Tape reading, and, and I'm going to prove to you right now that you already know how to read the tape, but I'm, we're going to elevate it to a different level. As soon as you put on a position, you know that stock better than anybody on Wall Street because if you bought it here and it's going up, you could feel it. If it's going down, you could feel it. Nobody knows it because you have that line in the sand. We call it the line in the sand. You bought that price. So if it's going up, it's going down. You are the smartest person on Wall Street in that stock. You know if you should be adding to that position. You know if you should be cutting that position. You'll know if it's, if it's working beautifully. You'll know if it's not working beautifully. Better, you will be the genius of that stock in that moment. Tape reading is doing that prior to putting the trade on. That's why we spend so much time about that line in the sand. You need to understand structure. So when we talk about measuring price action, and we'll just use the SPY as an example from yesterday, and we'll zoom out, and we're going to actually use the weekly chart to give you an example. Let me actually pull that up again. We're going to use the SPY, and we're going to use a weekly chart. So as we talked about before, there's been so much volatility in the market from the perspective of the persistency of it, but the, the whipsaw back and forth is going down. So we're having consistent slow moves to the upside. Some traders are finding the rotation challenging right now because it's changing quickly. We're going to eliminate that fear right now. We're going to make it super simple, easy, something you can apply right now. So if you could imagine, let's say for argument's sake, we're talking about tech stocks and we're looking at the QQQ. And you can imagine last week, and you want to learn how to read the tape in the QQQ and you want to be focusing on NASDAQ stocks. Well, what we teach everybody to do and as the, as the level kind of level one in reading the tape, there's more to it, building arguments and whatnot, is you need to have a line in the sand. And generally speaking for us, that is the opening price in whatever time frame we're watching. So if we're watching the Qs and we're watching NASDAQ stocks that make up the Qs, then we know that that line in the sand, before you put the trade on, if you even put the trade on, you say, okay, that as if I was in this trade, that's the level that matters to me. And I'm going to use another stock uh, earnings play from a couple of weeks ago to really bring this home. 
So if you're trading NASDAQ and you're trading the Qs last week, that's the weekly chart. So Monday opens up, and we're going to do this now so we can keep talking about it as the week unfolds. That's the line in the sand for this week. So the week of August 30th. That's the line that tells us, without even being in the trade, is order flow still valid this week? So if you could imagine right now that you are looking at trades uh, for a Monday through Friday trade, you want to be really, really dialed in. You'd be like, I want to buy on Monday, sell on Friday, right? That's one of the ways. There's a lot more that goes into it, but that's one of the ways. So we're going to actually take a look at trades from last week and how that affected the cues. So that's the line in the sand. And we go back to last week and we look at the daily chart from last week. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you have moves to the upside, you have a pause, a pause, a move to the downside, and then a move to the upside. As long as you have that line in the sand, you're not worrying back and forth all day, or every day about that because your line in the sand is right there and you are in control. So how does that translate into sector rotation and making good decisions now and eliminating all the stress that a lot of people are having in the market right now? You need to do the same thing in the stocks you're trading. You need to do the same thing in the sectors and you can pull up the sector ETF. So like if you go over here, let me make this a little bit bigger. You should have a list of major ETFs so that when the day ends every day, you're like, okay, I'm going to sort this by sector rotation. So there's Q's, the SPIs and the XLK, which is the technology fund. You'll know which stocks to be in. And we actually had a really good question last night um, from one of our members also about understanding if I have a really big list of stocks, how do I know which stocks to focus on right now? So you might go into the day with 20, 30. Actually, he, Mo actually said he had 60 stocks when we were talking about it in the coaching call last night. How do you know? This is the quickest way to narrow down a list of 60 stocks by sector rotation. So if Mo had stuff in his list that let's say was healthcare stocks yesterday, and for the better part of the day, again, I know we're talking about day trading here, for the better part of the day, healthcare started to rally. For the better part of the day, tech stocks started to rally. For the better part of the day, financial stocks were in the doghouse. So immediately you are taking all of the noise out of the market, out of the equation, simply by understanding how to filter your stuff, which is a huge part of trading. We're actually going to move over now. We're going to go into Michelle's question from yesterday, which I think was a really, really big one. So I'm actually going to zoom this out so you can see it and bring it in here. Okay. So the highlight of what I want to get across right now is number two things, two very big things. The first part is Michelle discussing all of the work that goes into trading. If you are finding it challenging right now, if you're finding it hard to be consistent, I am willing to bet, I don't bet, but if I was willing to bet, I'm willing to bet that you need to go a deeper level into doing your game planning. You need to just spend a little bit more time on how you decide you want to put your money at risk and buy stocks, how you decide what the order flow in the market is, how you decide all of that stuff. So the way that we do it in our community, and Michelle's just doing a fantastic job on this, is a couple of hours before the market opens, the night before you run your scans. So this is the part that I want to get across here. The night before you run your scans, then you go into the day and you make adjustments. I can't stress that enough because so much happens overnight heading into the next day. For example, uh, news that came out yesterday on um, Robinhood. I don't know if everybody saw that yesterday, but the entire business model from, for Robinhood right now came into question from the SEC saying, we're going to look into payment for order flow, which is, which is all of how they make money, which could send shockwaves through Wall Street because almost everybody does that who's a broker dealer, where you have your orders and it gets sent out to inventory or sent out to other place. Uh, yeah, Robinhood's business model is 100% at risk. Again, it was a headline. It was a statement. Nothing's being done. Let's keep everything in context. But that's the point of Michelle's question. You have stuff that came out yesterday. How does that affect today? Um, but again, I want to zoom this in so everybody can see it. What specifically are you looking for and how do you make your final decisions? So as a trader, I'm going to leave that up there so you can see that. As a trader, you need to really start dialing in. And we call it the stock market power period, which is what's going on in the market, what's going on with the sectors. And we'll bring up the sectors here because that's a big part of what we do. This is the sectors from yesterday. 
So you have this, the market, market making new all-time highs, sector rotation. Now this goes a little bit deeper. You have yesterday, the performance in the sectors were not awesome. Let me zoom that out a little bit so you can see it. So the sector performance wasn't awesome yesterday, despite the fact that the market, the SPY, made new all-time highs. And then you have rotation over the week. So now you're putting these pieces together. Where is the market gone? How much room is there to go? How much entries are perfect at this point? That's how the final list becomes the stocks you end up trading that day. So if we can get into a stock like uh, BX today, okay? Looking at the stock explode to the upside, yesterday the stock was obviously a buying opportunity, but was it a opportunity to buy expecting it to follow through? All of these things, the answer is no. The All of these things go into your game plan at seven o'clock at night versus your game plan and what finally goes into your list uh, during when the market opens. So I kind of answered Michelle in a way last night where I said part of it is experience, but that experience comes from structure. So we, we talk about this all the time. And remember, this is, this is a critical part of trading. Every single trader I've ever worked with over the last now 21 years, you should have posted pads all over your monitors with quotes. The biggest quote that you can have that should never leave your monitor is our job when we do our game plan and ultimately decide which stocks we're going to trade the next day, which by the way, I'm going to put the, one of the top stocks I'm looking at today on the screen. TJX is a stock that I'm looking for. One of those trades today where I'm looking for that bullish order flow after a pullback to maybe open slightly lower today and see some buying. And you can see the support level going back uh, over here in May. So TJX is one of those trades that I'm watching today. But the point that I want to get across on here, and this gets into game planning and creating, creating lists of stocks to trade, is our job as traders, if you want to have no stress, if you want to feel in control and wake up every day expecting to make money, that doesn't mean you're going to make money every day. It means expecting to make money because you did the homework, like Michelle said. And by the way, we do our homework on the sevens. We do it seven o'clock at night or maybe a little early, right after the market opens, and then seven o'clock again the next morning, where we'll jump in and you can see stuff like this, where we're now looking at which stocks are gapping up this morning to start to build our list that ultimately becomes our game plan as soon as the market opens. Now, there's other tips and tricks that we talk about in the community, making sure you use your watch list correctly after the market opens, sorting stuff and sorting certain columns for that moment in time. So if you can imagine you want to be a buyer of a certain amount of stocks that come into the day, you put those lists in your watch list, then the market opens, and now you have that column sorted that tells you these are the stocks you should be focusing on right now. So like Mo said last night, you could have a list of 30 stocks, but then as soon as the market opens, that last column that you, you check and make sure it's checked correctly, that, third, that list of 30 stocks could now maybe be a list of five to trade right now. And then the next hour, it could be a different five or it could be the same five telling you to stay in those stocks. That's how you put the pieces together. And that's that's really the the, the deeper context to the answer for uh, for Michelle's question. So yeah, absolutely, Clyde. Robinhood's business model is, it, it, it came into question. That's the big thing. There was another article last night, if everybody saw it on um, PayPal, uh, talking about allowing trading play, uh, on their platform. Uh, which is everybody's getting into being uh, a broken dealer, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me see. Um, uh, when I use fingers to scan, the date is today, yet it shows yesterday's performance. Uh, no, that's what you're actually looking for. You're actually looking. That's why we do them at night, because a lot of these um, softwares reset them in the morning so that it, it kind of zeroes out and then goes into the day. So it's critical that you do your scanning the day before so you have all the data from that day so you can set your order flow for the current day. So when you're going into the day, and we'll pull up Finviz um, real quick here, uh, they're, they're not gonna be the same scans though because it's the next day. So if you go into Finviz and you see that the, the main scan that we run, which is my template, this is there's 206 stocks that meet this criteria. Let me actually make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. I know I promised we we're gonna talk about this book. We'll save this conversation for tomorrow. Um, so this is the main criteria, but if we want to know, let's really dial it in. Which stocks had big green candles yesterday? How about that, right? Just as something simple. And it might be a little bit late. I don't know if it's going to allow us. We're going to go to change for the open, and we're going to go to up 2%. So that brought 209 stocks down to 22. So this is just the very first stage of order flow. So now we're going to go and sort this by change from the open. So before we get into this, 
what is this actually got, what is this about to show us? Just this one scan that we did in two seconds. Hey, Franklin, how's it going? Good morning. Uh, what is this scan showing us? This scan is showing us which candles had the open here and this. So this is showing us which stocks had one day of order flow. It's the, it's the smallest foundation of us having a commitment to looking to buy stocks. So if we go back over to that scan and we start to look at the stocks, we're now looking at only stocks that had big green candlesticks yesterday. And now they become the start of looking for ideas. So we could actually filter this down even more. So if we go back in here and we say, let's say I only want to see stocks that are above the 50 period moving average. So that eliminated five stocks. Let's say we want to say, I want to only see stocks that are also positive uh, for the last week. That brought, that kicked another one out. So what our job is doing, and that was a good question, uh, Yamit, is our job is to tweak the scans as many different angles as possible to find stocks that have the volatility that we want to trade. So opportunity to make money, the liquidity so that we can actually manage our upside and our downside, get in and out pretty much where we want to. And which stocks have order flow, which is by far the first thing. So what we just did in that scan was the very first thing was we look for yesterday's order flow. Which stocks from yesterday had the largest green candlesticks? That's one day of buying. So it opened here and traded all the way up here, but we filtered it out by volume and volatility. Then the second step we took was, okay, which stocks are above the 50 period moving average? So which stocks over the last 10 weeks are also strong? So strong yesterday, strong over the last 10 weeks. And you can keep dialing it in, twisting those all over the place. And you make this big list of stocks that you look at. And then you go to the charts and you start to narrow those down, which kind of takes us back into um, Michelle's question, which is what specifically are you looking for to make the final decisions? All of these things are what make you a trader. So if you're struggling right now and, and you want to get to the other side of feeling like you are in absolute control, it really comes down to figuring out exactly how to read the order flow and which stocks from the scans become the trades that go into your game plan the next day. And that's really what we specialize in is, is taking the, all the information and making it as simple as possible so you could make confident decisions. Okay. Um, let me just see. Uh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay. So, um, I just gave you a couple of ideas. I just want to go back into the, um, into the sector rotation because that's a big thing heading into today. So one of the biggest things yesterday, and this is really what makes a big deal about, uh, really getting into the ideas and understanding which stocks to trade. We've been saying how fast they were. Yesterday's sector rotation, it's not showing it here, but when you're in the market every day, technology and specifically big cap technology was very strong yesterday. Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, uh, if you didn't happen to see it yesterday, Apple actually exploded into a breakout, finally um, took the, the level out that we were watching yesterday. Oop, a, a <laughs> helps if I could spell it. Apple finally took out the level that we've been watching. This was actually pretty good price action opening lower this morning. So we really need to see if it's going to stay above that 152 level is still the level. So it's kind of trading right around that point right now. But the other thing I want to, I want to point out is yesterday uh, there was there was some good opportunity. But overall, the market, even though it made new all time highs, this is where you start to dig a little bit deeper into the trading opportunities. But we keep talking about energy. Energy actually took a hit yesterday. And, and I can't stress this enough. This is why it's critical for you, for our community, for everything that we look at. You can't just look at one day. Remember what I just said before about, about order flow. When we ran that scan of change from the open, it told us one day of order flow. If you could imagine, I'll use somebody as an example here. Let's say I'm going to use Raphael. Raphael from our community is a hedge fund. Let's just say for argument's sake, Raphael owns a hedge fund. He's got 5 million shares to buy of whatever stock. It doesn't make a difference. Let's say Tilray. Everybody likes trading cannabis stocks. He needs to buy 5 million shares of Tilray. He needs to start working that order. So let's say just for argument's sake, he started yesterday. And you notice a big green candle, very much like we just did, right? So let's actually take a look and we'll, we'll pull up Tilray so that we have a good, um, a good visual on this because I think it's kind of cool uh, to learn this way. So let's say for argument's sake, you're watching Tilray and part of what you do is you're learning to read the tape and you're like, wow, that's a big day. Looks like Raphael just started to, or somebody, we're using Raphael as an example, started to build the position. But now you're saying, okay, I'm a smart trader. 
Pete spends a lot of time talking about order flow. That's just one day of buying. I want to see if Raphael stepped back up again tomorrow. Was it one day? So if you notice here, and this is probably, it wasn't intentional. It's probably the best example. Raphael started buying here and you're like, yeah, let's join Raphael. But I'm telling you right now, it's only one day. And look what happens over the next three weeks. Boom, 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 boom. So what are we looking for now in Tilray? Again, a lot of people like to trade in Tilray. A lot of people are fascinated by it. When, they, when this industry moves, it, it's a pretty good trade. Right now, it's not in play. But we're looking for Raphael to step back up a second day and see some volume. All right, maybe two weeks later, Raphael stepped back up. We saw this happen in Penn two weeks ago. If you remember, we did Penn. We said, okay, volume exploded in Penn. Let's keep an eye on it. That $74 level is the level we're watching. And what happened in Penn? You can go back and watch the video. This is what ended up happening. This was the first day we started to watch it. Okay. You start to put the pieces together. So let's go back to Tilray. Okay. Tilray. Raphael did it one day. Not yet. Came all the way down. So you saved yourself by being smarter. Think about this. You're like, oh my God, every time I put a trade on, it feels like as soon as I put that trade on, it moves against me. It's because you don't have enough information yet. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about IBD or anything like that. All that stuff is awesome. When I'm talking about information, you want feedback that Raphael stepped back in. Did Raphael do it for two days? Did Raphael do it for five days? Did he do it for a week? And was the obvious order flow combined with volume? Did Raphael step up and spend half a million dollars on day one, $750,000 on day two? The dollar amount doesn't matter. What we're pointing out is volume came in and he can't hide his footprints. That's what makes you a trader. That's what makes you a tape reader. So one day, one week, two weeks, with good volume and you start to see turnarounds. This is where you start to notice things that you don't see in scanners because you're no longer lazy. So if we go back to Michelle's um, comment here, because I think it was a brilliant one and talking about the amount of game planning that goes into being a confident trader. And you could actually see that. And I give her a lot of, um, I'll give Michelle a standing ovation. You can see that she's doing the hard work and it's starting to come together. So if you are watching this right now, I know you're passionate about the markets. You want to see your game elevate? Learn what we're talking about right now, which is combining order flow, combining tape reading, combining volume to get to the point where if there's money to be made, you're going to get it. You're going to be in the right position. Then the last step is what happens between entry and exit, which is the magic. Quite honestly, we, we have 150 people on the call live right now. We could have 150 different uh, exits, even though we all have the same entry. That's really where trading becomes magical because once you get to the point where you understand order flow, you understand how to put those pieces together, you understand how to read the tape, which is timing, then you get to the last part where I'm literally walking you through my entries and exits and we do it over and over and over again so you can learn how to start to make those decisions. That's when you stop trying to be a better chart reader. That's the problem. <laughs> you don't want to be a better chart reader. You want to be a better trader. Traders look for money and build all those pieces. You know what chart readers look? Pete, should I use a simple moving average or an exponential moving average? That's not trading. <laughs> You're missing the most important stuff is building the argument for should you take risk and what is the profit potential and how do I capture that profit potential? And that's what we do. That's what separates everybody in our community, whether you're here in our community on YouTube and, and social media or whether, oh, by the way, um, we just launched a new uh, private Facebook group um, to answer some of these questions in a little more detail. If you want to uh, look at, if you want to join the Facebook group, um, click the link down in the description and click the Facebook link and um, join us in there. We, uh, we'd love to see you on the other side in there. Um, so anyway, um, we actually have our, our, we actually ironically have our private meeting that starts in a little bit. So I have to end this call so we can head over into that call and, um, and start to create the game plan that Michelle's talking about here now uh, before the market opens. So um, I just want everybody to know how grateful I am that you're here with me today because I hope it shows that I really love doing this. And if you don't know, I've been doing this for 21 years. I had a trading firm in New York City. So uh, thank you so much for being here today. I really hope that um, I really hope that I'm providing value and giving you some different ways of seeing things. Uh, if you could please do me a favor, click down and, and subscribe and hit that, that um, like button. It would mean the world to me. Um, scroll all the way down. Join the private Facebook group so we can have some more question and answer type stuff. 
Uh, we'll do some other videos and whatnot in there. Uh, and if you want to learn, again, I have to head over to our meeting and you, you saw Michelle's questions there. Uh, if you want to learn from me personally, click the link just below the video and learn about our boot camp and see if it's something for you. It's not a subscription. It's basically 30 days of me doing this um, with you and personally. All right. So uh, we have to head out. We have to head over to the other meeting. Um, have an awesome, awesome day, everybody. I'm so grateful that you're here with me today. If you have any further questions, leave a comment below the video. Click those two links in the video. Join the Facebook group. Learn about the boot camp. And I will speak to you soon. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it.